So it's 2025 and you're a developer in an AI driven market. What's your plan? Now I'm not pessimistic on this. Not everyone works at Salesforce and your job may not give a rip about AI really, but I think it's wise to begin considering where you want to be in say five years. Will you still be in tech? Of course, regardless of what everyone tells you, it is the place to be. If you look at this Future of Jobs report 2025, the fastest growing jobs almost all revolve around your skill set in one way or another. The fastest declining jobs, this isn't you. Take a breather. But you still need to spend time thinking and reevaluating. What do I like to do in this industry? What do I not like doing? What new skills should I be learning? What next steps should I be taking? In this video, I'm gonna give you a few insights, a few things to think about. And then I want to lay out my own plans for this year and what steps I'm taking, some of which may be a surprise to you. Here are some thoughts about it all in no particular order or ranking. Number one, web development alone will not be enough in the coming years. You will need to add some knowledge of how to incorporate incorporate AI into your applications. This will involve using an API like the OpenAI API to create simple AI apps to learn the basics of prompting, RAG, and perhaps the basics of how agents work. And this is mainly to add on core AI skills to your web development skills. AI apps require web developers. Even if someone uses bolt.dev to bootstrap an app, they'll need a team of devs to build it out and to maintain it. And you may not have to do anything with AI and we'll just continue maintaining web apps, but adding this skill set to your core programming skills is essential. Where do you learn this? Well, here are some resources I'm currently reading. I just picked up LLM Engineer's Handbook from Pact Publishing and we'll be working through that. I think it provides a great overview of all the components you may be asked to work with and after reading it, it will allow you to join in on the conversations being had currently. I'm also starting the book AI Agents in Action, which is found on the Manning Books website. In fact, we're just starting this in the Travis Media community this week with weekly calls to discuss it. And just a side note, I've made the community only five bucks a month this year. Let's navigate these new challenges together. And then finally, be sure to get your hands dirty. Go try it out for yourself. Build simple things and get familiar. Number two, it's near impossible for you with your primarily programming focused skill set to be a data scientist, a machine learning engineer, or to be involved with training models or all the math and statistics and all of that. Near impossible. These roles require master's degrees and PhDs and hundreds of years of experience. If you're young and you're going that route in college, perhaps, but for the rest of us, probably not. However, this is not a problem. As stated before, AI engineering, or whatever term is closest, requires developers who can integrate AI into real applications. In addition, AI requires those who specialize in infrastructure, orchestration, operations, observability. Like nothing changes here. AI apps still need to be deployed, monitored, and the methods of doing so are more or less the same. So know that adding AI knowledge onto what you currently do is a wise thing and will keep you relevant. Do it. Number three. What am I doing? What is my plan for 2025? Well, a number of things. I've spent some time reflecting where I've been, where I'm at, where I want to be, and what I do and do not like doing. And to be honest, I've come to this realization that I don't particularly like web development much anymore. I've been there and building websites doesn't really make me excited anymore, but I still 110% love programming and this industry as a whole. So nothing really changes for me except perhaps I won't be building websites much. When I think about the most exciting aspects of my career, one of them has to be working with Kubernetes, which I did for three years. The DevOps infrastructure automation space was really exciting for me and I miss it. And if you're like, what's Kubernetes? Check out my 15 minute explanation in this video. And I think in this AI market, Kubernetes will be used a lot with AI deployments, observability, scaling, and all of that. So I've decided this year to get back into working with Kubernetes more. In fact, I've planned to become what they now call a cubestronaut by the end of the year, which means I've passed all of the Kate's certifications. Three times now in the past, I've studied for the CKA and I've gotten to the point of scheduling the exam and just let it slip from my fingers. This year, I'll not. And this isn't me telling you to do this. This is just what I'm doing in my own unique way. And the definitive resource for all things Kubernetes and really all things DevOps is, as I've stated for a number of years now, CodeCloud. And they have a Kubestronaut cohort this year with a learning path, Discord and all. And there are many people attempting this. And this video is not sponsored by CodeCloud in any way, but if you've followed me for some time, I've recommended them for years now. There's a link below if you wanna sign up for their cohort. Also, if you do, 
Join the Travis Media community so we can keep each other accountable. Next, I'm planning to use Golang this year for most of my work, where appropriate, with an aim to get better at it. I've used a number of languages in the past. I feel really good in JavaScript, Python, C Sharp. I love Rust, but I just don't have any use cases for it, nor the time to really learn all the things about it. And as mentioned, I've honestly lost a lot of interest in web dev specifically. And looking back, Golang has always been a really fun language, a small language with a standard library that acts as a Swiss army knife, giving you all the essentials to do most things. It's fast, it compiles, and it's statically typed. So I'm going to work largely in Go this year for these reasons and become better at using it. Next, I want to really get up to speed on AI overall. I've mentioned most of this above, including the books I'm currently reading. My goal though, is to understand the key concepts of what we've established so far, as well as where we're headed. Again, I want to be able to join in on the AI conversations being had these days. If you read recently about Salesforce's new statement saying they aren't hiring any more software engineers this year, the CEO also said this. And then we will have less support engineers next year because we have an agentic layer. We will have more salespeople next year because we really need to explain to people exactly the value that we can achieve with AI. So we'll probably add another 1,000 to 2,000 salespeople in the short term. Now, I'm not saying you need to become a salesperson. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying there's a huge market here and in the near future for people that can explain this stuff to people. And it's an even more valuable thing to be able to implement it as well. Next, I aim to read more technical books that help me really understand the bigger picture, how things work, how to better solve problems. For instance, I have Why Machines Learn currently on deck and am working through a chapter every two weeks of System Design Interview and Insider's Guide, Volume 1. So expect, in addition to these types of videos, some more technical videos this year as well. And as a side note, if you're wondering what I'm reading outside of tech, including these tech books, I have a page on my website where I list out all of the books I'm reading this year. I love to see what other people are reading. If you do as well, I'll put a link to that below. I'll be updating it throughout the year. And then finally, I think I'm going to, at some point this year, try to get back into the job market. Now this wouldn't change anything about Travis Media, YouTube, or my community at all. Travis Media is a necessity for me, whether it's successful or not. It's something I've always had to do and will always need to do. And my videos, aside from my writing and recording of them, which happens once a week, can be completely outsourced from edit to publish. So no difference there. And I'm not 100% sure on all the details of this, but overall, I miss being in the thick of the industry. And this may turn out to be another DevRel position, a DevOps position, or something similar. We'll see. It's not an easy market out there. I have a lot of catching up to do. If you have any recommendations, shoot me an email. So that's my plan this year. If you want to follow me as I hit these milestones, subscribe, like the video. If you want to get on the inside, join the community. Otherwise, have you thought about this much? Are you making any changes this year? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. See you in the next video.